Good morning. Welcome to worship here at Grace Lutheran here in Ely, Minnesota. I'm Pastor Eric Miller. We're so grateful that you have uh, joined us, uh, hopefully from the comfort of your home or perhaps uh, the comfort of somewhere uh, by a lake or outside uh, with a nice cup of coffee on this uh, wonderful uh, summer day. A couple of uh, reminders. First of all, today is the third Sunday after Pentecost. Uh, we uh, will be in the color green uh, and be in this uh, season after Pentecost until uh, right around Thanksgiving. So uh, we look forward to uh, all of the growth that we will do as a church uh, and as individuals as we continue to grow in our faith. Uh, also, um, as you uh, are tuning in here and as you're gathering for worship, I would encourage you, first of all, to um, uh, open up the, the bulletin that should be attached to this video. If not, it is in the previous post. Uh, on our Facebook page, you can open up and look at all of the reminders that are there. I would also invite you this morning to uh, go down to the bottom right. Uh, should be a share uh, option down there. You can share this video uh, to your own page. I would encourage you to do so by using the hashtag uh, Grace in Ely MN. Uh, that way you can also not only share it to your own page, but also you can encourage people and invite people uh, to join with you for worship. Uh, let them know what you're doing here on this Sunday morning. I uh, just wanted to just simply acknowledge a couple of things that are happening in our world. Uh, first of all, uh, Friday, as many of you are likely uh, aware, was June 19th, also known as uh, Juneteenth. Uh, this was the day uh, that, um, in 1865, the, uh, that commemorates the announcement of the abolition of slavery uh, in the state of Texas. Some of the last people... Uh, to find out. So this is also known as Freedom Day or Emancipation Day uh, for those uh, still not knowing that they were free uh, from slavery. So we lift that up uh, today as we com commemorate uh, the ending uh, of slavery. Uh, I would also uh, just like to acknowledge that today is also Father's Day. Uh, so we give thanks uh, for all of those uh, men in our lives who, uh, who care for us, uh, our fathers, of course, uh, brothers, uncles, grandfathers, stepfathers, stepbrothers, and any and all men in all circumstances uh, who share their love with us and who are uh, there for us and guide us. Uh, we celebrate uh, this day and every day with you uh, for the example that you set uh, showing the love of Christ uh, with others. We also acknowledge that today uh, might not be uh, some, some people's most favorite day. Some, um, for some, Father's Day is a challenging day. And for those, uh, for those of you who might have strained relationships, uh, those whose fathers have died, uh, or those uh, who are struggling with your identity as a father, or might desire to be a father but, but might not be able to for one reason or another, uh, we pray and we walk with you on this day uh, and in your journey um, about being a father or perhaps a father figure to someone uh, in, in your life. Uh, so we lift up all of those situations and many of those that we that I haven't mentioned. We lift up and we celebrate and walk with you in all circumstances uh, here today. Uh, also, finally, uh, remember, uh, offerings continue to be uh, valuable. Uh, remember a few op uh, options. You can mail it in uh, here to the church, 301 East Conan in Ely, Minnesota. Uh, you can uh, go to our website, graceandhealy.org and uh, figure out uh, there should be a couple of tabs there that uh, are there for online giving. You can also email us, uh, gracelutheranhealymn at gmail.com, and we can help get you set up with uh, automated giving, simply giving is, as it's called, uh, and if that's the option you choose to do, where it would be a monthly uh, recurring withdrawal. Uh, so uh, as we gather for worship today, we gather together in the same way that we live, in the name of the Father and of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us take this time to confess our sins against God and against one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin 
and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin, and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Let us join together in our gathering hymn, hymn number 660, Lift High the Cross. And as just a, as a reminder, uh, Megan here will, will play a couple of measures uh, before we uh, begin singing the song. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Teach us, good Lord God, to serve you as you deserve, to give and not to count the cost, to fight and not heed the wounds, to toil and not to seek for rest, to labor and not to ask for reward, except that of knowing that we do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our Gospel reading today comes from Matthew chapter 10, verses 24 to 39. With the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. This is Jesus speaking as he says, 
A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher, and the slave like the master. If they have not called the master of the house of Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of this household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing is secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I will also deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. This is the gospel of our Lord. Dear sisters and brothers in Christ, grace, mercy, and peace are yours, from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. If you remember from last week, we heard from Jesus what following him looks like. Essentially what discipleship with him looks like. You will remember that Jesus said we are called to proclaim the good news of the kingdom. He calls us to cure every disease and sickness, to raise the dead, and to cast out demons. Certainly, this looks much different now here in the 21st century than it did in the 1st century when Jesus gave those very instructions. Essentially, Jesus calls us, as we recall in the promises of our baptism, to participate in the activities of our faith community through things like worship, partaking in the sacraments, learning and diving into the Word of God, serving all people, and striving for peace and justice in all the earth. We hear these words spoken to us as we are baptized, and again as we affirm our baptism, and again as we participate and help those grow and learn the faith along with us. This is the instruction manual we receive from Jesus and receive at our baptism about what we are called to do and called to be. This week, Jesus continues in his explanation of these instructions, the mission and ministry to which we have been called, by laying out the consequences of following him. Simply put, following Jesus is not easy. Jesus informs us that following him has some consequences that may well be great, but will also result in division and discord within society, within the church itself, and even, as Jesus points out today, within our family and within our own friends, people whom we love. This is not new. As Jesus points out again and again, this has been going on for some time, and it will be a reality that is not going to go away. To follow our baptismal callings may result in the very division and discord Jesus warns and promises will happen. Often, this discord comes as the result of speaking out on behalf of those marginalized, as Jesus and the disciples experience firsthand in their ministry on earth. Jesus understood 
that division and discord was rather prevalent in his time. And he also understood that much of that very division and discord was on account of him, the things that he said and did. In today's Gospel reading, Jesus, once again, does not hold back. Jesus knows that following him and the teachings that he brings, also known as discipleship, can and will cause great division, can and will cause great discord in society and within our families. Our passage today focuses on that very discipleship with Christ, about what it looks like. And there's some factors for you to remember. First, it is important to remember what family meant in the time of Jesus. Family was your identity, your safety net, especially if you were a woman or a child. You were completely dependent upon the care of your family and especially those males in your life. A husband, male offspring, your brothers, for example. It was a male-centric world back then and males had all the power. Family meant that you usually had a roof over your head, some form of monetary security, and often the ability to eat and ultimately survive. So family at this time was critical to your very survival because when you did not have that very family, your existence was in jeopardy. There were little to no safety nets back then. Second, came with division and discord. As I mentioned earlier, Jesus understood what following him meant. If we take a look at verses 34 to 36 here today, it says, as Jesus speaks, do not think I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace but a sword. For I have come to set man against father, a daughter against her mother, and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. And one's foes will be members of one's own household. Such interesting imagery here today as we observe Father's Day. It is best to understand the sword imagery here, though, not as something as a tool of war, but as a tool that causes division, something that may cut through cultural, familial, and societal ties and cause division. Jesus understood that the message he brings will disrupt that sense of security one may have in their own family ties. Many times in the ancient world, people may have heard of the message that Jesus brings and converted, or began to follow him in, the, in that very message. This is what would have caused the family to be set against itself. Father against son, daughter against mother, foes of their own household. Following Jesus, especially for the early disciples, often meant giving up their own family. This meant leaving that sense of security, the sense of safety and sense of survival. We see this happen in people like James and John, who literally leave their father in the boat, Zebedee, to go and follow Jesus. Leaving your family of origin also meant you get a new one, a new family, a new life a new way of life, a new identity, new belonging, and a new definition of what your family identity is and what it means to be a family. All of this was hearing the invitation from Jesus to come and be one of his disciples and answering that call. Hearing this call and answering it disrupts what family means. In this new definition of what family means, families are now defined by the ways in which they engage in the ministry and work Jesus calls them to do. The new nature and definition of a family would no longer be based upon what nationality you may claim, Finnish, Norwegian, German, but by a reflection of the ministry of Jesus. The nature of our work and of our ministry is crucified and reflects Jesus' own death and life. Discipleship in Christ is not just about 
what will be served and coffee and following the service, but truly living out and believing what Jesus says, what Jesus stands for, what Jesus does, and being called into action. Make no mistake about it. This discipleship with Christ is risky business. Relationships will change. Relationships could very well end. Finally, discipleship in Christ means to take up your cross. In Matthew 10 here today, we have the very first instance where the cross is mentioned but does not make reference to the crucifixion itself. But is a reminder that this is a prerequisite for following Jesus. Unless we, in a sense, take up our cross, we cannot begin to comprehend the way of Jesus Christ in the world. Now, for clarity, taking up our cross does not mean that we have to deal with some sort of slight annoyance in our lives, but that we are called to deal with the bigger issues that are at stake in our world. Taking up our cross often means speaking up against empire and against oppression. Taking up our cross means realizing that we are not to just recognize the issues that we are having, but to address the issues of others, often those most marginalized in our society. When Jesus calls us to come and follow him, Jesus does so knowing that we will meet resistance. We will be put into situations that require us to seek the truth and that may go against the grain in our world on account of what Jesus is calling us to say and do. We, the church, are called to name a thing for what it is. We are called to name things like systemic racism, and white supremacy, and sin. Sins that are pervasive in our world and in the church because too often we have chosen the easy road in the past to not speak up, to remain complicit. We have chosen to remain silent in the face of that which devalues a person or a group of people on account of the way someone looks, on account of someone's culture or background, on the way that someone loves another person, and based on someone's immigrant status. Too long, far too many people have cried out in suffering for a new life that is given through that very birth of God which breathes, breathes new life into creation, only for us to realize they simply cannot breathe. Too long, our silence has meant our complicity in systems that do not affect people we know, but nevertheless are extreme problems in our world. Too long, Simply put, we have chosen comfort over justice. The way of Jesus is the way of the cross. The way of Jesus is the way of naming the reality staring us in the face. The way of Jesus means naming the fears which hold us back from speaking out in order that we, in order that new life may be realized. As we continue to learn, Following Jesus does not mean life will be easy, does not mean that we will be comfortable at all times, and does not mean that we will not have to face our fears and the fears of others. Following Jesus means that we will encounter these things and more. We will be made uncomfortable. Yet, above all, we cannot forget that Jesus walks with us, and we cannot forget that the cross is good news. For us, and especially for those seeking peace, justice, and new life. Discipleship in Christ is not easy. Jesus never said it would be. Speaking the truth about a situation in our world is not easy. Jesus never said it would be. Putting our very existence on the line is not easy. Jesus never said it would be. We can take heart and be hopeful because Jesus promised us that in the midst of our discipleship and of our truth-telling, Jesus promised to be with us every step along the way and to the very end of the age. Therefore, I encourage you, 
Take heart. Do not be afraid to speak the truth, to follow Jesus, to encounter and face the fears of our world. For Jesus is with us, helping us along the way. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us join together in our next hymn, in number 802, Let Us Ever Walk with Jesus. Before we do the sharing of the peace, I realized as I was singing the song that uh, in the hymnal uh, there was an extra line that went up onto the next page that I just simply missed. So if you were wondering why there, why Megan kept playing, 
and all of a sudden the words stopped. Well, that's because I missed that next line on all four verses, so I apologize. Uh, if you want to go back and uh, perhaps sing, I would encourage you to simply Google uh, that hymn and make sure that you grab that extra line. So I apologize for, for making that mistake there. The peace of the Lord be with you all. I would invite you to, to share a sign of peace in the comment section with the use of an emoji, so like uh, the peace sign, uh, or perhaps a dove, which is a symbol of peace and the Holy Spirit, or simply uh, in, the, uh, in the comment section uh, to say, uh, peace be with you, or something to that effect. And following worship, I would encourage you to share that peace by calling someone, uh, whether it's over Zoom or uh, on the phone, uh, to check in with your friends and, and your neighbors. Lord, remember us in your kingdom, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And may you receive this blessing as you go forth from here. May God bless you with this comfort, easy answers, half-truths, and superficial relationships, so that you may live deep within your heart. God bless you with anger and injustice, oppression, and exploitation of people, so that you may work for justice, freedom, and peace. God bless you with tears to shed for those who suffer pain, rejection, hunger, and war, so that you may reach out your hand to comfort them and turn their pain into joy. And God bless you with enough foolishness to believe that you can make a difference in the world, so that you can do what others claim cannot be done, to bring justice and kindness to all our children and poor, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite us to, to join in our sending hymn, hymn number 661, I Love to Tell the Story.
Thank you all for, for joining us uh, for worship here today. Uh, don't forget to uh, call or, or check in with some friends or family members uh, that uh, maybe you haven't been in contact with.